Okay, so for the second half, I thought maybe we'd talk about, uh, Lou kind of encouraged me to talk about other polymer type casting materials. So we're going to introduce the possibility of maybe the rubber, instead of being the mold, being the casting. So we can do that too. Um, I didn't bring a lot of stuff to talk about those kinds of things here, but just think about that as a possibility. In other words, instead of making a rigid casting, make a flexible casting. Why would you want a flexible casting? Well, maybe for the tactile quality, you know, because it feels good. Maybe for the visual qualities, because it looks different. Rubber by nature has a much softer surface. It can't be polished, so what you get is what you get. But think about those things and where you might use that in a piece. In the meantime, uh, I'd like to talk about adding color to resin. And adding color, as we spoke about earlier, we've got uh, dyes and we've got pigments. What's the difference? Dyes, by definition, tend to be transparent. Pigments, by definition, tend to be more opaque, although certain pigments you can make work like a dye. In other words, you can put a light application of pigment into a mixture and get it to a point where it's just a very slight tint. And so we're going to talk about that, demonstrate some of that here. Let's see, we've got some smooth cast, 325. Again, we're going to use a smooth on product. Smooth cast 325 is a transparent resin. Starts out looking about the same as the resin that we used earlier. The difference being that when it sets, it stays clear. So it's not going to turn white when it sets. Um, this happens to be a polyurethane. So it's that particular class of resin. So here we've got some urethane specific tint. We're going to try just a drop in there. You see I've got it in a plastic bag <coughs> to protect me from it. So <coughs> you see we've got part A, part B. <coughs> Typically we'll put the color into the part B beforehand. So a little bit of color goes a long ways when you've got pigment. <coughs> Some of these materials <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> will contain chemistries that are more conducive to adding to the part B. And once in a while, if you put it into the part A, not to say it won't go, but certain systems, if you put it in the part A first, it'll kind of form a pre-reaction and it'll upset the, that whole dance we talked about. <clears throat> um, that would be an extreme case, but generally speaking with polyurethanes, put the color in the part B. <clears throat> so here we've got something that's in a deep section, it's going to be opaque. Okay, so <clears throat> we'll do that mold, we'll do this mold. So what's, what's he doing, they say? He's spraying some universal release agent into the mold. I don't particularly care for that name because it's not universal, but it does work for many, many resins. Even with the release agent, it's going to break down, but it, it's going to extend the mold life considerably. It's important to let the release agent dry thoroughly on the mold surface because there's, number one, there's a solvent in there that needs to flash off so it evaporates, it has a little bit of a smell to it. <clears throat> number two, if the environment is just right and you spray the mold surface and it's cool and damp, it's going to chill that mold surface and you're going to get moisture on that mold surface that's then going to react with your resin and create bubbles. So it's important to make sure that's good and dry. Sometimes I even use a blow dryer to blow the surface dry and warm it up a little bit. Now this material here doesn't set quite as fast as that other one. So we've got a little more, a little more time. Does it say how much time on the box? Or? Always. That's why it's important to read those data sheets. This is Smoothcast 325, which is a relatively fast set. I think the setting time on this is about 15 minutes or so. I don't have the data sheet with me. All this stuff is available online, though. If you go to SmoothOn's website, 
they have all their uh, information, technical data sheets, as well as material safety data sheets, and certain kinds of pigments, certain kind of fillers. Uh, the resin might not like, but in this particular case, um, we're not going to have that problem. So you can see it's a fairly nice translucent blue. It's not transparent. I'm letting it warm up a little bit. And if you guys come up here and feel this, you can feel that getting warm. Because when I, when I pour it in this mold, it's going to be thinner. So we're not going to have as much mass nor heat generation there. And if we go back to the basic function, thermoset, we're introducing heat via a catalyst or a hardener to create the polymerization. That's the basic chemistry behind these materials. Sometimes these things will set so fast that you can pour them midstream and they'll stop. We're not going to do that here, but I can feel it's getting to that point. Absolutely. Absolutely. Timing, um, you know, conditions, uh, how warm is it in your workspace, how much material have you mixed. Um, you know, here's the same type of resin with a dye added to it. The interesting part about this is that if you look at an opaque version of the casting, you can see the image very readily. If you look at a transparent one, it doesn't show up so well, but when you hold it up to the light, it changes it dramatically. So, you know, sometimes you can use the angle of viewing along with whether or not the light is passing through a surface or from the, the front of a surface to alter the way an image looks. So if we look at this piece, if you guys uh, want to come up here and take a quick look at this, um, as I lift the edge of that rubber, you can see the center of it is pretty much set. Wow, that is bad. But if I lift the edge, you can see it's still liquid around the edge because guess what? That's the coldest part. So the mold is functionally acting as a heat sink and drawing the, the heat away from the casting. You can see it's smoking. A little bit of smoke coming off there. Now, I, ideally, that's, that's, that's mostly going to be a filler that they put into the resin. It's, it's an extender that they put into that resin. So it's evaporating as it gets hot. So within the next five or ten minutes, we should be able to demold those. All right, so we've got an alginate mold here that's a little bit old. It's shrinking and, and starting to pull away. But we're going to try a little resin in there just to kind of demonstrate what moisture intrusion will do to your resin and um, what old resin can do. This is some older resin. <clears throat> and we'll throw a little bit of color in here as well. Okay, let's put that back in there. All right, so again, if we're going to put color in here, where do we put the color? Where did we put the color? In the resin, not the camera. And the B side. This is going to be a pigment because this is a, going to be an off-white color when it sets. So I'm going to put a little bit more color in here because we're going to have to overcome that, that opaque. It's going to be something like this on its, on its own. But we're going to put something in there to make it a little bit red. We'll see what it looks like. We'll see what she looks like. In the meantime, we're going to spray this mold. with a little bit of release agent. Now one of the things you don't want to do if you're spraying release agents, you don't want to spray release agent in the same room that you might be doing some painting. Uh, these are all silicones. Silicones are terrible with paint films. 
Yeah, this is all one to one, so we like this stuff. No weighing, no science, no math, and it's starting to get warm. Again, I tend to wait a little bit longer than I should to de to uh, pour these things. So here is our, in the meantime, our little angel. As you can see, right now she feels kind of like a gel, like a uh, like a gummy angel. She'll harden up in another 15 or 20 minutes. Yeah, that one sometimes takes a little bit longer to cure completely hard. It might be a little leathery. And they do make some resins nowadays that you can even bend after the fact. They make um, a resin specifically for these architectural applications where you can do the casting, let it cure, pull it out, hold it up onto the curved surface and nail or tack or screw it into place and there it will stay. And here, here this is a little better one. Okay, catch. Uh-oh, this is starting to set. We better get it into the mold. So this is probably contaminated material because it's starting to foam. See how it's starting to foam up? When you say contaminated, you mean? Probably some, some moisture in it. About the, actual resin. the actual resin itself, yeah. Right. And there it Whoa. goes. Gene Simmons, <laughs> eat your heart out. <laughs> All right, we're going to hang it off the edge here. Whoa, watch out. What happened was one of the components got moisture in it, probably from somebody opening the container. And this is what happens. Once you get a container of material and it's been opened, when you pour a liquid out, air goes in, guess what? Along with that air goes moisture, depending on what the conditions are of the day. And the moisture will be dissolved into the resin. And when you next time pull material out of that container, you're also pulling moisture along with that material. And when you mix the two together, the moisture that's in there will create gases that will make it foam. And that's what we've seen here. So this is what we have. We've got essentially a piece of foam. But I think we can pull it out of the mold. And now we can take this piece. Get some mint bubbles. Yeah, and, terrible, and bend it yeah. or whatever over a surface to create something that is not what it was originally. And these materials get packaged into these containers, they'll package them with nitrogen, which is very dry. And so they, they, it's called the dry blanket. And so it's a dry blanket of, of this dry gas that sits on top of the liquid that's inside the container. So it prevents that liquid from absorbing any moisture. But as soon as you open it, moisture is getting in there just from the atmosphere. So everything changes. And they do what they can to maintain the freshness of these products. They'll put uh, chemicals in there to scavenge the moisture so that it doesn't impact the, uh, the cure. But at the end of the day, you're still going to get some um, compromising of the, of the product. It's just the nature of the beast.